Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Goman Singh. Happy Friday. This week was marked by the first official visit of the United States Secretary of the Interior, Sally Jewell. The Secretary had quite a busy week, from visiting the National Park on St. John to speaking at the transfer ceremonies. Secretary Jewell also took time to address some issues, including voting rights and Cuba. News 2's April Knight has more. Prevailing concerns hung over Interior Secretary Sally Jewell's visit to the Virgin Islands. Among those, the issue of Virgin Islanders' inability to vote for president. Jewell said she can't speak for President Obama and that the matter rests between the local government and Congress. She acknowledged that territories have their challenges, but also stressed that the fate of Virgin Islanders is in their own hands. She says Virgin Islanders can choose whether to remain a territory, pursue statehood or go for independence. It's a right to self-determination. And so this is really part of making sure that the citizens of the United States who live in the territories recognize uh, that they have a hand in shaping their future. Governor Mapp did repeat the invitation for President Obama to visit the Virgin Islands before the end of his term. It's been somewhat of a sticking point, especially after the president's decision to visit Cuba. We would love to host him. It will be a place of uh, additional warmth. We know he's loved and respected and admired uh, globally and, and within the United States as well, but the warmth in the Virgin Islands for the president is, is significant. The Secretary of the Interior did somewhat dodge a question on how her department can help the Virgin Islands remain on top of the tourism industry in the face of normalizing relations between Cuba and the United States. Her response, the VI has what it takes to remain competitive. Changing relationships between the U.S. and Cuba are at a very early stage, but Canadians and Europeans and uh, Africans and people from elsewhere in the world have been able to go there, South, South America as well as the other islands. And the Virgin Islands have completed, competed very effectively. The Interior Secretary also spent some time discussing climate change on St. John and promoting the Every Kid in the Park initiative. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. The Senate Committee on Economic Development, Planning and Agriculture, chaired by Senate Vice President Jeanette Millen Young, met on Friday. They considered some pieces of legislation, but toward the evening, they held a hearing on a topic that, according to Senator Millen Young, has been long overdue, climate change and its impact on the territory's economic future. Testifiers stressed the urgency of climate change response and how it's already affecting the territory. It affects our water supply, our coastal areas, our infrastructure. It touches every facet of our lives, Chairman Young. We view climate change preparedness as one of the most significant policy initiatives this territory will undertake since the Organic Act was introduced to the territory. Is that serious? We in the Virgin Islands can say without a doubt that weather patterns have changed dramatically. There was a time when the agriculture community could plan their production activities around anticipated and somewhat predictable rain events with some measure of reliability. For all intents and purposes, those days are behind us. On Monday, April 4th, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA's regional administrator, Judith Unk, government officials and community stakeholders will be meeting to discuss recycling and composting in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Topics will include promoting the shift to recycling and composting in USVI with an emphasis on keeping trash out of waterways. That meeting is free and open to the public. It's on Monday, April 4th, 4 to 6 p.m. at Government House. Well, it seems that some of the dangerous chemical methyl bromide found in the territory came via Puerto Rico. Two companies that were implicated in an investigation by the Environmental Protection Agency provided the chemical to a company in the Virgin Islands. Truly Nolan Pest Control and Tower Exterminating are facing many federal violations, and they got their M&P Pest Control based in San Juan. This is just the latest in what is looking like federal crackdown on use of methyl bromide. Earlier this week, Terminix International and Terminix VI agreed to a settlement agreement of $10 million, $8 million in fines, $1 million in restitution, and $1 million in community service projects in the VI. 
that would go toward training for pesticide applicators. Florida USVI Poison Information Center uh, reps from Jacksonville. They will be in St. Thomas April 4th to 8th for the center's annual Poison Center Awareness Trip. And it's to provide free educational programs to several schools and healthcare organizations in the center's efforts to help keep the community poison safe. The first one, Monday, April 4th, a health professions lecture will be held at Schneider Regional Medical Center from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And then on Tuesday, April 5th, an education where awareness for middle and high school at the Charlotte Molly High School from 8 to 10 and then on 9.30 as well. And uh, St. Thomas East End Medical Center Corporation from 12 noon to 1 p.m., Tutu Park Mall, then again at 4 to 5 p.m. Wednesday, April 6th, Education Awareness for Middle High School BCB Junior High from 1 to 2. Thursday, April 7th, Lockhart Elementary from 9 to 10. An Education Awareness for Middle High School at Ivana Udara Ken High School from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Friday, April 8th, Poison Presentation at Wesleyan Academy from 9 to 10 a.m. And then Health Professions Lecture at the Schneider Regional Medical Center from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. The delegate was unanimously accepted into a new Democratic coalition. And this group consists of policy and issue-oriented Democrats in Congress focused on the new economy and challenging old and partisan approaches towards governing. She said she looks forward to engaging her colleagues on issues affecting the Virgin Islands and in advancing a public policy agenda that supports business and creating better opportunities for the people of the Virgin Islands and for working American families. Also, Plaskett met with the U.S. National Park Service Regional Director, Stan Austin, to discuss land use issues in St. John. She shared land use issues impacting the residents of St. John and uh, looks towards some solutions. Count on two to keep you updated. Well, after a rocky first round, the industrial hemp bill finally got a nod of approval from the Senate on Wednesday. That bill, co-sponsored and strongly advocated by Senator Terrence Nelson, went through a critical revision that finally swayed members of the Senate. The bill, which in its original form, allowed for commercial cultivation of hemp, now restricts its use to research only. It would also allow the University of the Virgin Islands to apply for some $200 million in research grant funding. Well, don't miss the next town hall meeting when you will have the opportunity to voice your concerns. This one will be held in Frenchtown April 4th, 6 p.m. at the Frenchtown Evangelistic Church. You are encouraged to speak your mind about what can be done to address concerns in your community. Then April 11 at 6 p.m., the second meeting will be held in which some of those solutions will be provided. Issues such as crime, noise, cleanup, and more, they're all being addressed. Friday was the second and final day of the Nuclear Security Summit in Washington, D.C., where the U.S. and a large number of world leaders met to discuss how to prevent nuclear materials from falling into the wrong hands. Scott McLean has this report. This is a perfect example of a 21st century security challenge that no one nation can solve alone. To tackle that challenge, President Obama hosted more than 50 world leaders in Washington, D.C. this week for the fourth nuclear security summit, with leaders noting that efforts to reduce and protect nuclear materials have been made. The summit is about nuclear security, and everybody is very clearly focused on that. The amount of nuclear material in circulation continues to decline. And highlighting a new agreement. 102 nations have now ratified a key treaty. That Obama said would make it easier for nations to work together in the event of the theft of nuclear materials or an attack on a nuclear facility. But President Obama said the world cannot be complacent about nuclear safety. He fears that terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda are trying to obtain nuclear weapons overshadowed the summit. There is no doubt that if these madmen ever got their hands on a nuclear bomb or nuclear material, they most certainly would use it to kill as many innocent people as possible. The vicious terrorist acts in Brussels last week only underscore the importance of the NSS process. In fact, world leaders devoted an entire session Friday to discuss how to counter nuclear terrorism. The single most effective defense against nuclear terrorism is fully securing this material so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands in the first place. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. 
keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. Taking a look at the numbers, you can see everything's up. The Dow 107, NASDAQ 44, S&P 500 also up at 13. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead. It's opening night. It's uh, Sad Mangoes. It's a hit. Historical reps say the pay as you can night, which was last night, was a huge success. We'll have more on why you don't want to miss it. Welcome back. Hundreds of stakeholders across the USVI participated in customer service training sessions held by the Department of Tourism earlier this month. Sandra Husbands, CEO of Caribbean Company Business Development Services, and Lisa Wynn Magnuson, founder and president of the Virgin Islands Etiquette and Leadership Institute, facilitated the training at UVI's Great Hall in St. Croix and Windward Passage Hotel in St. Thomas. There were sessions tailored for supervisors, taxi drivers, and tour operators, and presentations from the Office of the Governor on ADA, which is Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, the Virgin Islands Police Department on traffic rules and safety, and a personal development session. Close to 400 participants attended the general session. St. Croix and St. John will be featured on ABC Station's Emmy Award-winning Rock the Park and the shows are scheduled to air Saturday, April 2nd and April 9th. The two half-hour episodes of the popular ABC Stations program features everything related to America's national parks that will feature St. Croix and St. John. Episodes of Rock the Park, filmed on St. Croix and St. John, hosts Jack Stewart and Colton Smith. They explore St. Croix's national park locations, including Buck Island Reef National Monument, Salt River and Lagoon, and Fort Christian Vern. It will broadcast locally in the U.S. Virgin Islands this Saturday on ABC Channel 14 at 11.30 a.m. Be sure to check that out. Department of Tourism officials say the trip to Miami and Fort Lauderdale early this month, including the territory's participation at the Sea Trade Global 2016, was a huge success. Commissioner Beverly Nicholson Doty reported strong interest in the ports of the VI from dozens of cruise line executives. The commissioner accompanied Governor Mapp to talks with a number of cruise line executives and industry experts. They explored competitive landscape, including challenges and opportunities for improvements, such as the importance of new water transportation options and elevating the cruise passenger experience, including Main Street on St. Thomas. Successful meetings were also held in New York, Minneapolis, and Chicago with more than 100 journalists, editors, travel agents, meeting planners, and airline officials. Well, transfer day ceremonies were not the only thing that drew a crowd on Thursday. That evening, an art gallery came to life at Yacht Haven Grand. The art and history exhibit, An Ocean of Dignified Dust, filled the walls with images of Virgin Islands history. New Suze April Night has more. It's called An Ocean of Dignified Dust, a pop-up art and history exhibit at Yacht Haven Grand, highlighting a darker part of Virgin Islands history. The history of the coal carriers, and in particular, the coal carrier strike that took place in 1892. Curator Priscilla Hintz Knight recalls when the art exhibit took root. So Aisha Morris, who's the director of the Dollar for Dollar cultural and historical tour that has been taking place for the last 10 years approached me with an idea of possibly doing an exhibition. The exhibit opened on the evening of transfer day, drawing crowds to the varied pieces and artifacts on display, from paintings to photographs to old videos and artifacts. We have a hybrid of historical elements that we're interweaving, such as um, narrative accounts from different um, sources of the actual coal carriers. Local artists also took on the challenge of creating pieces focused on the theme. And Sor Cologne, a regular at pop-up exhibits in Yacht Haven, was able to sell this piece depicting a coal worker. I really admire these coal carriers because this was really hard work. Each 
basket weighed between 85 to 100 pounds. They would get full of soot and, you know, a lot of them suffered different diseases um, related to, you know, inhaling so much of the cold mm -hmm. dust yeah. and, and the soot. So it was really hard work. And, um, these women did it with great pride. An ocean of dignified dust remains open until April 4th. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. On Saturday, April 2nd, the gallery will be hosting a presentation of a 40-minute video on the tour commemorating the 1892 coal workers' strike. Listen up, young men. The 6th Annual Man Up Male Empowerment Conference is coming up on April 5th and 6th on St. Thomas and on April 7th, St. Croix. This year's Man Up Conference has a new format. In addition to having dynamic keynote speakers, young men attending the conference will be able to meet in smaller groups. Also, the conference will be held for two days on St. Thomas at BCB, then CAHS. Sherman A. Brown, founder and chief empowerment officer of AIM High International LLC, will be the keynote speaker on St. Thomas. And Former Labor Commissioner and entrepreneur Albert Bryan Jr. will be the keynote speaker on St. Croix. Sad Mangoes is a hit. Pistark will rep say the pay-as-you-can night was a success. The theater was at capacity and the crowd loved it. They say be sure to join Gloria Gomes, uh, Larry Bryant, and the rest of the cast in the play Sad Mangoes by Stacey Bryant at Pistarkel Theater, which is in Tillett Garden. Tonight is the actual opening night. Last night was the pay-as-you-can night. There are shows on the 2nd, 3rd, 8th, 9th, and 10th, all at 8 p.m. Sunday matinees at 2 p.m. You can get your tickets at pistarkletheater.com, uh, or you can call them at 775-7877. Sad Mangoes is featured in the 2015 New Playwrights Festival. It's a local story of love, conflict, and island life with a mix of humor and drama. It's the story of a young girl who feels responsible for her um, mother's death as a child. And we see how her grandmother helps her to get over that. I play the character of Warren. He's the bad boyfriend. So you got to come out and find out why. Um, and again, it's written by Stacey Bryan. She's a local. Um, she was a contestant on our um, annual Playwrights Festival that took place last year and she actually won um, the competition. Be sure to check that out. The Department of Planning and Natural Resources reminds you that due to heavy rains this week it is anticipated that negative environmental impacts will be caused by storm water runoff. DPNR advises the public to use caution when using the coastal waters throughout the territory until further notification. DPNR is also advising parents to instruct their children to keep away from stormwater impacted beaches as well as areas with manholes and stormwater flooding. There may be an elevated health risk to anyone swimming in stormwater impacted areas as a result of increased concentrations of bacteria. All persons should also be aware that stormwater runoff may also contain contaminants or pollutants harmful to your health. And uh, as we head into the weekend from the National Weather Service in San Juan, they said uh, partly to, to variably cloudy skies will prevail through tonight. Isolated to scattered showers with isolated thunderstorms expected. We have the latest on the weather that's coming your way next.